Hello friends, welcome to the session on oscillators. In this session, we will be discussing about sweep circuits. In this session, we will see what are the different types of sweep circuits that are used to generate the sweep voltage. In this session, we will see the working of uh, Miller sweep generator and bootstrap sweep circuit. These circuits are also called as the time-based generators. Friends, as you know that you are viewing this session on my YouTube channel, Learn with Prakash Khanade, and do subscribe to the channel to see many videos on the subjects of electronics and computer science. So let us start the session, what we mean by the different sweep circuits. We know that there are certain electronic circuit that will provide the linear time scale. That is, it is possible that the voltage generated at these circuits or the current generated at these circuit will increase linearly with the time. And these circuits are being called as the sweep circuits or they are also called as the time-based generator circuits. So these circuits will generate the voltage or current that will increase linearly with the time. So these circuits, we call them as the sweep voltage. The, the voltage generated at this circuit is being called as the sweep voltage or sweep current. And these circuits are being known as the sweep circuits. You will find that the sweep circuits are very important circuits since they are needed in many applications. So whenever we want to achieve a horizontal motion of the electron beam in the CRO screen or in radar screen or in televisions, then for such purpose, these circuits are used. Also, uh, we should note that the linearity of the sweep will depend upon the current that is flowing through the capacitor. If this current is maintained at constant level, then it is possible that we can increase the linearity of the sweep. As I told you, there are different types of sweep circuits that are available. And simply by charging a capacitor through the resistance, we can generate the sweep voltage. But to discharge this capacitor, we need some switch. And this switch can be either a transistor or a unijunction transistor. So there are sweep circuits where a transistor can be used as a switch. In certain sweep circuits, we use unijunction transistor or UGT as a switch. There are certain other circuits where the linearity is enhanced and such circuit is being called as a Miller sweep circuit or another type of the circuit that is very popular in the sweep circuit and that is being called as the bootstrap sweep circuit. So in this session, we are going to discuss all such circuits where the sweep voltage can be generated. So let us go for the first circuit where we will be making the use of the transistor as a switch. As shown in this diagram, suppose we have been given a transistor and some biasing resistances are coupled to the transistor. The input VI is there where we can apply a negative going pulse. The capacitor C is connected between collector and emitter or collector and ground because the emitter of the transistor is connected to the ground. So in this case, one can easily observe that this transistor is not used as an amplifier, but it is used as a switch. So simply by charging and discharging of the capacitor through a transistor, it is possible to generate the sweep voltage. So the working of the circuit can be easily understood Suppose initially the input is equal to zero and suppose the biasing resistances are so adjusted that the transistor is in the on state or saturation state. And therefore the capacitor will be short circuited through this transistor and the voltage across the capacitor will be equal to zero. And therefore the output voltage will also be equal to almost equal to zero. Now, when we apply a negative going trigger pulse to the base of the transistor, then you will find that the transistor will go into the off state. So when the transistor goes into the cutoff state, you will find that the resistance between collector and emitter of the transistor will increase. And therefore the capacitor now can charge through the resistance R and the voltage across the capacitor will go on increasing exponentially. So as shown in this figure, initially the output voltage is very small or the voltage across the capacitor is very small. 
but when the negative pulse is being applied the voltage across the capacitor will go on increasing now when the pulse goes to an end then you will find that the transistor will again go into the on state and therefore now the charged capacitor will discharge to the transistor and therefore the voltage across the capacitor will fall down suddenly so within a very short span of time the voltage across the capacitor will fall down through the transistor and therefore you will find that we can generate a sweep voltage waveform across the capacitor so in order to maintain the linearity of this uh, sweep voltage it is necessary that the sweep voltage vs must be smaller than the supply voltage vcc if this condition is being satisfied then one can easily observe that the sweep speed error will be very much less and the linearity will be much higher the sweep speed error of such circuit can be given by es is equal to vs upon v or which can be written as ts divided by rc so if rc time constant is higher then the sweep time ts then the linearity is much higher and the sweep speed error will be much less so this is time constant rc can be replaced by a constant tau where tau is the time constant which is equal to rc it is also possible that instead of using a bipolar transistor we can make the use of a unijunction transistor in the sweep circuits unijunction transistor as we know has an emitter terminal and two base terminals b1 and b2 suppose the resistance r3 and capacitor c is connected to the emitter and the resistances b1 and b2 are connected with the resistances r1 and r2 the terminal b1 is being grounded through the resistance r1 and terminal b2 is connected to the positive power supply so this is a simple circuit where we can make the use of the unijunction transistor or ujt for the generation of the sweep voltage so initially when the circuit is switched on then the capacitor will go on charging through the resistance r3 and therefore the voltage across the capacitor will go on increasing exponentially so initially we can suppose that the transistor ujt will be in the cutoff state and the capacitor will go on charging through the resistance r and therefore the voltage across the capacitor will go on increasing exponentially as shown in this diagram now when this voltage reaches to the peak voltage of the ujt or firing voltage of the ujt then we will find that the emitter voltage will rise and therefore the ujt will turn on so we know that every ujt has a firing voltage or peak voltage and whenever the emitter voltage of the ujt reaches to this value then the ujt fires or ujt is turned on when the ujt turns on then this charged capacitor will discharge through the resistance r1 and the voltage across the capacitor will fall down so as shown in this waveform the voltage across the capacitor will fall down suddenly as the ujt is turned on so when this voltage falls below the valley point voltage or vc then again you will find that the ujt will be turned off and when the ujt is turned off then again the capacitor c will charge through the resistance r3 so one can easily observe that here also in this circuit the ujt is being used as a switch initially the ujt is in the off state and therefore capacitor charges but when capacitor charges its voltage increases the ujt voltage also increases when it increases sufficiently then the ujt is turned on and therefore the charged capacitor will discharge through the ujt so one can easily observe that in this circuit the there will be a continuous charging and discharging of the capacitor and we will not require any external negative pulse in this circuit and therefore in this circuit a continuous short of voltage will be generated across the capacitor so this process of charging and discharging will go on continuously and therefore the sweep voltage will be continuously generated in this circuit now one can easily observe that the charging time constant can be given as r3 into c 
and the discharging time constant can be given as rb1 plus r1 into c so this time constant is much smaller the discharge time constant is much smaller than that of the charging time constant also one can easily observe that the voltage across the resistance r1 will have the waveforms as shown in the figure there is another method by which we can generate the sweep voltage and this method is being called as the miller sweep circuit in the miller sweep circuit an attempt is made so that one terminal of the capacitor is being kept at zero level so that the current flowing through the capacitor is maintained constant and when the current flowing through the capacitor is constant then it is possible that we can increase the linearity of the sweep voltage so the circuit diagram for the miller sweep generator is shown in the figure here we have used two transistors transistors q1 and transistor q2 and a capacitor c is being connected between the base and collector terminal of the transistor q2 so in this circuit the transistor q1 acts as a switch while the transistor q2 acts as a high gain c amplifier it is also possible that instead of using transistor amplifier we can make the use of operational amplifier now initially we can suppose that the transistor q1 is in the on state and the transistor q2 is in the off state if this is the case then the output voltage will be almost equal to vcc because the transistor q2 is in the off state and therefore the current flowing through this resistance rc will be very small and therefore the output voltage will be almost equal to plus vcc now when we apply a negative going trigger pulse to the base of the transistor q1 then you will find that the transistor q1 will change the state and it will go into the cut off state once the transistor q1 goes into the cut off state then its collector potential will rise to almost vcc and therefore the base potential of q2 also rises and therefore the transistor q2 will go into the saturation state or on state now the charge capacitor will discharge through the on transistor q2 and therefore the voltage across the capacitor will fall down so one can easily observe from this waveforms that when this negative pulse is being applied the voltage across the capacitor or output voltage will fall down now when the pulse is being removed then the transistor q1 will again go into the on state and it will force the transistor q2 to go into the cut off state now this terminal of the capacitor c will be almost at zero level and now the capacitor will charge quickly and it will charge almost with a constant current and therefore the voltage across the capacitor will increase exponentially so one can easily observe that we can generate the sawtooth voltage across the capacitor by charging and discharging of the capacitor but in this circuit also we will require a negative pulse in order to change the state of the circuit another circuit that is being very commonly used for the generation of the sweep voltage is being called as the bootstrap sweep circuit in this method a constant current is approximated by maintaining nearly a constant voltage across a fixed resistance in series with the capacitor so as shown in this diagram this circuit consists of transistor q1 and transistor q2 observe that a capacitor c is being connected between the collector and emitter of the transistor q1 and which is charged through the resistance r so the voltage across this resistance r is being kept constant so that the current flowing through the r is constant so that the capacitor c can be charged by a constant current uh, another capacitor c1 is being connected between the emitter and the collector of q1 as shown in the figure also this circuit requires a series diode connected as shown in the figure so observe that in this case the transistor q1 acts as a switch while the transistor q2 acts as an emitter follower so this is not a, a common emitter amplifier but this is an emitter follower circuit where the output is taken from the emitter initially we can suppose that the transistor q1 is in the on state and the transistor q2 is in the off state now the capacitor c1 
will get charged to the positive vcc through the diode and the output will be almost equal to zero initially so here the capacitor c1 is being charged to the positive vcc initially through the diode d now when we apply a negative going pulse at the input or to the base of the transistor q1 then the transistor q1 will go into the cutoff state now once the transistor q1 is in the cutoff state now this capacitor uh, will get charged through the resistance r because initially when the transistor q1 was on this capacitor was in discharge mode because it was short circuited through the transistor q1 but once the transistor q1 goes into the off state now capacitor c can get charged through the resistance r the capacitor c now charges through the resistance r and therefore the voltage across the capacitor and hence the base voltage of the transistor q2 increases when it increases then the output voltage also increases and when the output voltage rises then this rise in the output voltage is communicated to the resistance r through the capacitor c1 so one can easily observe that the voltage across the resistance r is being maintained constant and the voltage across the capacitor c will rise linearly so when the output voltage rises then the diode d is reverse biased and as i said the voltage across the capacitor r is almost constant that is the capacitor c is being charged by a constant current and the output voltage will rise linearly with the time that is the linearity of the sweep voltage in hanahas by charging the current by a constant current so when the input pulse ends then the capacitor c will discharge through the on transistor q1 because once the pulse end then again the transistor q1 will go into the on state and now the charge capacitor will discharge through this transistor and therefore the voltage across the capacitor will fall down therefore the base voltage of q2 also falls down and therefore the output voltage also falls down so as shown in the figure you will find that when the negative pulse is applied the voltage across the capacitor will increase linearly once the pulse ends then the voltage across the capacitor will fall down to almost zero value that is we are generating the sweep voltage across the capacitor and in this case we are assuring the linearity of the sweep by charging a capacitor c by constant current because the voltage across the resistance r is being maintained constant so thank you friends for viewing the session hopefully you have understood what are the different sweep circuits and the working of these different sweep circuits thank you all for viewing the session